Okay, vapor phase without vapor obviously is uh, not particularly beneficial. Uh, and unfortunately, the vapor historically was a consequence of the use of fluorinated uh, liquids, which were outlawed as a consequence of their ozone depletive characteristics. Uh, fortunately, those chemistries have been advanced significantly, and today, uh, vapor phase uses uh, a perfluoropolyether chemistry that allows us to create the needed vapors, uh, provide us the temperature control that we desire without the negative effect, the effects uh, on the environment and the atmosphere. Um, one of the secondary benefits of these fluids is the exclusion of oxygen from the reflow process at the joint interface. Um, so once, this, once the circuit board is actually lowered into the vapor phase machine, it is blanketed in a very, very thin layer of condensed fluid and that condensed layer excludes all oxygen from participating in the uh, in the reflow process. Um, and what does that do for us? Well, it provides a much lower stress environment on the flux chemistries. So the flux chemistries themselves can actually work on the metals rather than on the environment that is in communication with those metals. That results in a much better intermetallic interface. Um, Lead-free joints are typically quite dull but uh, they will appear brighter uh, as a consequence of the vapor phase process than they might in a normal convection reflow system. Um, within this environment, no oxygen means uh, greater surface tension. Greater surface tension means the effects of self-centering are improved. Um, that in turn leads to better wetting and fillet formation, and all of the above give us a much better general joint integrity. So what are these fluids? Well, perfluoropolyethers or PFPEs are a carbon fluoron oxygen chain. They're actually qualified as liquid polymers more so than they are solvents. Um, they have extremely high resistance to temperature, uh, very, very high resistance to reactive chemicals, phenomenal dielectric properties. Um, and it is an absolute fact that some of the big contract manufacturers have done dielectric studies across circuit boards which were reflowed in vapor phase um, with comparative circuit boards that were reflowed in convection um, and the dielectric properties of the vapor phase reflow circuits were 10x better than those that were reflowed in convection. Um, this stuff has a very very low vapor pressure, no flash point, um, extraordinarily high vapor density and excellent heat thermal transfer coefficients uh, characteristics that particularly play an important role in the vapor phase process. It has a low surface tension which is equally important to us when we look at array packages because it is that low surface tension that allows us to capillary uh, unhindered um, under the very very small and very very fine pitch array packages to communicate that heat directly to the hidden IOs. Um, no health problems or special protection required for operators or staff, uh, no chemical activity, and zero ozone potential damage. A heating process of the liquid in the vapor phase system um, is that we heat the, heat the fluid to create the transfer mechanism. Um, we'll heat the fluid to its boiling point, um, supplying energy through the heat mechanisms which are attached to the outside of the machine. Um, and ultimately what you're actually doing is, is creating the latent heat transfer mechanism where you get zero change of temperature but you do get a change of state and in creating that vapor we're creating our thermal transfer mechanism through condensation to the circuit board. So we have a vapor phase fluid which is now um, acceptable to the environment, it is inert and uh, presents no danger whatsoever to the operators who would come into contact with it. And so once again, the vapor phase process is an acceptable alternative to convection systems. Um, and there are many, many different types of machine in, in the marketplace today. The question that ultimately gets asked is how can you control preheat um, in the vapor blanket without creating huge, huge degrees of thermal shock um, and guarantee the oxygen-free nature of preheat right the way through to uh, liquidus and beyond. Well, you have to try to recognize that it is not the temperature differential that is the issue or that creates thermal shock. 
it is the delta in the energy that is available in the system. So by controlling the energy flow into the system, we can control the rate of rise of temperature across that circuit board. So basically when a circuit board comes into the system, um, the amount of vapor that's available for it for condensation, and condensation equals energy transfer, is extremely low. Um, and through the period of the process, we ramp the temperature into the fluid. Um, through the increase in temperature and energy, we increase the quantity of vapor. And it is the increase in the quantity of vapor um, that allows us to increase the rate of energy transfer. And that is what allows us to control the gradient of temperature and the rise rate on the circuit board relative to the desired rise rates um, and the mass and complexity of that circuit board. Another feature associated to the characteristics of vapor um, is the automatic solder break. So when a, when a circuit board reaches its peak temperature, and that peak temperature would be the same as the boiling point of the fluid, um, any excess vapor is no longer going to condense, it is actually going to accumulate. Now the vapor is heavier than air, so it will accumulate in the bottom of the tank, um, and there are sensory systems in the tank to determine that vapor buildup is occurring. Um, and in the event you have vapor buildup, you are in essence confirming that the temperature of the circuit board is at peak um, and assuming that the profile time has been reached then the reflow process is deemed to have concluded um, and the machine will automatically end the process. Now this is actually a safety feature uh, that incorporates these characteristics uh, to protect against a light mass circuit um, inadvertently being reflowed under the profile that would most commonly be used for a high mass circuit. So in essence you can't cook the circuit, there are fail safes in the system, they are physical fail safes um, and they protect against the eventuality of the wrong profile being used against the wrong circuit type.